Want to know how you too can start a cleaning business and scale it to $120,000 a month in a little over five years? The owner of Queen Bee Cleaning Services, who started from home, achieved just that with a startup cost of $5,000. In this episode, we are talking to Chris about how he managed to scale from zero employees to 25 in such a short time. Chris started out as an immigrant working different jobs until him and his wife started this home cleaning business in 2015. With a total sales of $3.2 million, Chris was called to the annual Maid Services Summit as a guest speaker. The cool thing about this platform is that these customers are ready to buy. I use a lot of text marketing instead of using email marketing. What would be the secret, you would say, to be successful, to be most profitable? You will see the sales within two months and you'll thank me later. It's been one of my keys to fast growth. In this episode, we're gonna to talk to Chris about the mistakes he made in the business. One small mistake also that led to a hefty fine and how he used marketing to make things work in his business and how you guys can start your own cleaning business and not make the same mistakes. What are you doing that's working on Craigslist? A job like this, it will, it will run you about 400 to 500. I think it's the best time to start a cleaning business. Um, Not everyone is doing that. Okay. And there's definitely something that every, every business should implement. I promise you guys, if you work your database, it's mm -hmm. a gold mine there. This is the key to grow your business to the next level. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, like this video, hit that bell, you don't miss any videos. And let's go talk to Chris about their incredible growth story in this business. Hey, Chris. Hey, I'm Paul. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. How you doing? Good. Let's dive into it. All right. Sounds good. All right, you guys, we're not going to slow Chris down. He's got a busy day ahead of him. So we're going to ask questions and work at the same time. Uh, Chris, let's dive into your story about Queen Bee Sur Cleaning Services and how you ended up starting it. Yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can work and, and yeah, do it yeah, at the same definitely. time. Yeah, definitely. So it's, it's, it's a pretty fun story. You know, I was selling cars at the time, um, you know, making good money. Uh, my wife was the one who started the idea. He's, she's like, we should start a cleaning company. I just didn't see myself doing it. I said no, but I'm glad that she convinced me because I decided to start uh, the website and just taking the calls myself. Mm -hmm. And three months in, you know, she was making more money than I was. <laughs> and at that time, I decided to quit my job and go full in. Is it a good time to start a cleaning business or not? It, I think it's the best time to start a cleaning business. Um, you know, after the pandemic, it seems like everybody wants their home clean. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, to give an idea on how much of the demand is, or last year our, our monthly revenue was 60,000, now we're like 120 a month. So yeah. it's like double. And sometimes we turn jobs away. So you can start a job tomorrow, and I promise you, you will have your first customer within days. I bet, and we'll talk about the expenses, the startup costs, everything you guys need to know to be successful. All right, Chris, let's talk about uh, your startup cost and break down the 5,000, how you invested that. For sure. So the original investment was $5,000. So it was $4,000 for a, a Honda Accord, I remember. It was a black Accord, okay. 2003, I remember it very well. A professional backing was 500 bucks, uh, about another $300 in uh, supplies. And the rest was just uh, flyers and business cards. And that's it. So that's it. So yeah. the car costs the most. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So oh, yeah. if you don't yeah. have a car, you, you don't can get you can... in this business, what? Well, a thousand bucks? I, well, you know, you can start using your, your truck. Well, at the time, you know, I had a big truck. It was not a good idea to use a big truck driving around, you oh, know, okay. the gas. Yeah. Oh, so sense. that's why I, I, I decided to buy a small car. But yeah, you can, you can start with a, you know, a small thousand dollar car. It doesn't matter. I mean, you're going to make money very soon and then you're going to upgrade your vehicles. Nice. But I'm saying for those that do have a car. Right. Oh yeah. They, they can start. They don't need to. Yeah, yeah, so they can. they can start with a thousand dollars for yeah. sure. Let's talk about how your customers today find you. Yeah. What platforms are successful for you? What mm -hmm. are you guys spending? And anything else you can share on that? Yeah, for sure. You know, so we only use three channels of marketing. Okay. So our main one is Google Ads, specifically Google Local Leads. So very mm -hmm. important for home services. It's a new platform that Google came up with and you get shares by call. But the cool thing about this platform is that these customers are ready to buy. The other second platform, it will be Facebook, mm -hmm. and the third one will be Yelp. Yelp, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're spending about $4,000 in Google Ads, about seven, 750 in Yelp, and uh, 1000 in Facebook. Got it. What's bringing in most? Is it Google? Google, for sure, okay. yes. Well, don't say much, because we got that hack coming up. Okay? Oh, yes. 
for uh, sure. I have a hack for you guys that you're going to love it. Everybody who has a home service business, this is the key to grow your, your, your business to the next level. Sounds like we're going to go to your storage That's right. uh, area yeah. uh, or whatever you would want to yeah, call it. Storage. Uh, tell us a little bit more what we're going to see there, how, why important it is maybe to get a storage unit yeah. instead of having everything at home and For what sure. can you share? Yeah, yeah. So we're actually going to be dropping off all this uh, dirty laundry over there. Okay. Uh, we're going to be picking up new laundry. This is, I'm going to show you the setup I have for my Airbnb customers. Uh, what do I do? What do we do for them? And, oh, you know, you know it, it, it's going to be pretty exciting. Okay. So watch. Well, let's go. Let's hop in our cars. All right, you guys, I'm excited. We've done a couple of these interviews with cleaning businesses. It's always interesting to see how people do differently and uh, what we can learn. So let's hop in and go. All right, everybody. This place is actually familiar. We've done an interview here, so check out that video as well. Hey, Chris. Give us a tour. Of What's course. inside, Airbnb and everything else? For sure, let me show you. So this is storage we use. Wow. This is, um, so this is the laundry cart. You know, we have a, a laundromat that is very close. They come and get it. They come and drop it off in bags. And then uh, I have one of my employees actually make those packages. So all these packages, what they have, it's uh, pre-made packages for the Airbnb customers. So gotcha. they have towels, uh, linings, pillowcases, uh, duvets, everything. Um, we have supplies for the kitchen. So for example, we have dishwasher, deter detergent. Um, this is what you use to then clean the dishwashers. Uh, well, mm, essentially you, you replenish the Airbnbs with all oh, this. Right. So okay. this is for the guests essentially. So we provide like a white glove service for the host. Mm -hmm. They don't need to do anything. We take care of the cleaning, the laundry, and, the, and then the supplies. Chris, curious what sets Queen Bee apart from your competitors? What do you do different, more unique, that sets you apart? For sure. So uh, there's actually two things. Uh, I will say the first thing, it's having an exceptional customer service. Uh, if you have a good customer service, you will see the difference in within days. Mm -hmm. So my customer service uh, answers the phone from 7 in the morning all the way to 11 p.m., seven days a week. Wow, 11 p.m. So, Yes, uh, there's people you know that get off from work late, and when you know when they try to call a company, who are they gonna call? Right. The guys who's actually answering the phone. So definitely that's that sets big. me apart. Seven days a week, seven to eleven, and the other one it's I have an online booking system. Mm -hmm. So you can go to my website, and if you don't want to talk to anyone, you can just go enter your uh, information, so how, how big your home is. It will throw you the price, and nice. you can book and there right there and then. Not everyone's doing that. Obviously. Not everyone is doing that. Okay. It's definitely something that every, every business should implement online booking. What about your monthly overhead though? Now that you're at 22 to 25 employees, uh, what is the overhead monthly just to cover costs? And what's the most expensive thing every month? Oh, so our most expensive thing is the labor. Right. Um, it really is. It's, it comes down to, uh, you know, we have to pay uh, good wages, otherwise we don't keep good people. Mm -hmm. Our expense on labor is about 60%. 60 a month, mm -hmm. okay. And, and then I will say supplies, that's another 10%. And marketing operations, another, another you know, 10%. So you end up with uh, ideally 20% on the lowest 15% net. Gotcha, okay, mm -hmm. so your profit margins are in that 20 to 15%. 20 to 15%, percent, correct. Okay. For example, if you want to run Facebook ads, if you send the people from Facebook to your website, most likely you, they will not convert because you have too much information in your website. I see. What you want to do is get click funnels, create a funnel, which has only one action and it's just to get, generate your quotes. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I just create a funnel, people click on my ad, goes to click funnels, they enter information, and within five minutes, they get the quote. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys, Click Funnels actually happens to be our sponsor today. And if you are a business and you want to grow your customer base, 100 people, maybe the next 100 days, Click Funnels is the place to go. It's not only for brick and mortar. By the way, they're giving away 96 hours of free brick and mortar training for you guys. But even if you're not a brick and mortar business, there's a ton of tools out there that will help build your business. So check it out. The details are gonna be in the description below. So thank you for that. You guys, we're about to take you to the actual Airbnb house that Chris and his team are gonna be cleaning. Mm -hmm. So follow with us. We're on to the next steps. Anything else you wanna add? No, that's it. Just follow us. Okay, 
you guys, we're here at this gorgeous building that is currently an Airbnb house. Mm -hmm. Your crew's here, Chris. Why don't That's you take right. us inside and yeah. kind of explain what they're doing and uh -huh. anything else you want to share with us? Absolutely. This can go on over. Come on. So how many people usually for this size of a house would be working here? Mm -hmm. oh. We send about three people per unit because usually we deal with big units like this. Mm -hmm. You know, like three, four bedroom with two, three bathrooms. So we usually spend about three to four hours in each home because we literally have to deep clean it top to bottom uh, to make it uh, guest ready again. So we change the laundry supplies, you know, all the supplies for the, for the bathrooms mm -hmm. and uh, also the kitchen supplies. So it, we, we take time to do it because we want the customers to get five star reviews. So what would a customer pay for this kind of job? A job like this, it will, it will run you about 400 to 500 per, per turnover, but that's, that's included bad. everything. That's laundry, uh, supplies, and cleaning. And what would you then, I guess, profit or net profit after everything? Um, you end up with about 20% uh, of that, so we, $80 per job, and we do about uh, 18 jobs of this, something okay. like that. Mm -hmm. Chris, can you share any top resources for small business owners out there that really helped you as well? Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I wish I would have learned about this website. It's called score.org. It's a hub where you can find anything from how to create your business plan, how to create your uh, marketing plan, nice. and how to run your, uh, your numbers. So it definitely it's free. Uh, most of the content is free, mm -hmm. and it's a great resource that I'm still used to learn more about my business. Okay, that's awesome. You guys should check that out, but most importantly as well, check out upflip.com forward slash blog. It's very similar to what he's talking about. It's all free there for you guys, how to write a business plan, how to operate this, this, that. We're there to make you successful. Let's discuss the services you offer. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious and uh, about how you come up with the different packages, mm -hmm. what are most profitable or more popular mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. others. Yeah. Uh, can you break that down for us? Yeah, for sure. So we offer three different types of uh, service, which is home service. That's for you know homeowners. We do move outs and move ins, and we do Airbnb cleanings. You know, our bread and butter will be the recurring revenue. So meaning uh, the people who pay to clean their home every two weeks or three or four weeks. That's uh, you know where the money is because essentially you start doing those jobs in a lesser time, so you start optimizing the time, so you make more money. Uh, move outs, they're profitable, but sometimes they're trash and it takes yeah. longer than it should, so you kind of have to balance that. And uh, Airbnb, Airbnb is a, is a really good business when you know how to do it right. So for those watching right now who uh, want to get into this cleaning business, uh, what would be two, three pieces of advice to, to them? Well, the first thing is uh, definitely start investing in paid ads. Even though we grow fast, I think I spent maybe a year and a half, almost two years doing free ads, you know, meaning Craigslist ads, flyers, posting on Facebook groups. It works, it really works. But if you really, really want to grow your business to the next level, you need to start looking into paid advertising. Google came up with this new platform, which I mentioned earlier, Google Local Leads, that is specifically for home service business. They charge you per call. Mm -hmm. uh, if they don't buy the service, you can challenge the, the lead. I tried it for like a month. I said, let's, let's, let's try it again. Uh, I was blown away. You know, I remember that was on August of 2018. 2018, okay. Uh -huh. By September, I was now struggling finding people because now I had found like the best source of business. Uh, so now I had a problem of finding employees, which is a good problem to have. How seasonal is it? Are you consistent throughout the year? And if you do have slow seasons, Chris, what do you do to shift during that slow period mm -hmm. to still continue to be profitable and make it? Yeah, so we do have a slow season, which is uh, you know the, the winter time, the winter months. So winter months, okay. Yeah, December, January, February usually slow. So what I do to help you know during those times, I use a lot of text marketing. Uh, it's been three years since I discovered it. instead of using email marketing. Text marketing. People mm -hmm. respond to text. So what I do, I offer you know crazy deals. So you know, get fifty dollars off today. You know, and I send that text to you know uh, fifteen hundred people. 
at least 10% will reply to you okay. and say, yes, okay. I want to I wanna save it. So what I'm trying to do during those times is just keep my employees busy so they make money. And, you know, I, I take a little bit of a, a hit on discount my prices, but at the same time, I'm taking care of my employees. What? So when the good season comes around, you know, they're, they're ready there for me. What are you doing that's working on Craigslist? So specifically, te technical stuff. Uh, well, I, I disclose my prices right there on the on the price uh, on the on the ad. That's you different know, from that's, others. Yes, everybody. If you go to Craigslist, you can see other people say, "Hey, we clean houses. We do this. We do that." Um, if you want to see my ads, it will say the prices are this, mm -hmm. and it starts from this. What that does, it filters everyone who's not, uh, you know, ready to pay for my prices, and whoever calls, they're ready for the prices, so right. most likely to buy from me. Nice, mm -hmm. that's a good trip, you guys. Yeah. But what platform are you using and how are you getting that list of 1,500 people? Well, it's very important. This is another tip, guys, uh, that it's, it's, it's phenomenal, um, and many people don't do that. It's, you have to have a CRM, meaning uh, a customer relationship manager software, yeah. where you keep all your customers and all your leads that have contacted you throughout okay. the year. Doesn't matter if they didn't become your customers, you still keep their information because when you have these slow months, you use this when you do the text marketing uh, or email marketing uh, in any case, right? But text marketing is the way to go, guys. At 90% open rate, that's what I've seen on my... 90%, wow. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty good. What platform are you using for CRM? And then is it different for text to send out that text or is it all through the CRM? All through the CRM. So I use a software, it's called Go High Level. Pretty simple uh, platform. All I do is download the list of mm -hmm. customers and I, I segment them. For example, I have the existing customers who don't need my services because, I mean, they, they already purchasing, use my services, right? Um, I segment the ones that canceled or the ones who contacted me or, 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 or there was just leads. And then I send a text blast to all of them. And I promise you guys, if you work your database, it's mm -hmm. a gold mine there. You know, there's a lot of people that don't know that. But if you shake the tree, like I like to say, you shake that tree, <laughs> you'll get some fruit every time. How do you come up with how much to charge? I mean, you talked about knowing your numbers yes. earlier on. Yeah, what are, yeah. What are the tips and tricks and really figuring out the sweet spot? Yeah, definitely. So this is what I did and I think everybody should do that. I mean, I didn't know anything about charging. I uh, actually, I remember the very first job it was a move out. My wife hated me for it. I think we charged $90 uh -huh. and uh, she literally spent like 12 hours with another lady. Oh no. And, uh, <laughs> and so after that I was like, okay, I need, to, I need to find out what is the market paying. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I call uh, companies in my area uh, and I said, hey, how much will you charge me for a three bedroom, two bathroom? Okay. And I got some quotes. Then from there, I kind of said, okay, well, I, I'm not at that level yet because I don't have that uh, reputation. But now I know I'm really underbidding and I should charge more. Mm -hmm. So I will say, you know, call a few uh, companies in your area and, uh, you know, get a different quotes. That way you, you see how much uh, are charging and uh, that will give you a, a good number. Okay. We've interviewed other companies as well. Uh, reviews are very important. They are. Right? It is. They are. How do you get them and how do you deal with negative ones? Talk, talk to us about the process, first of all, getting reviews. Big reviews. Well, you know, this is, this is something key. I started doing it last two years when I, you know, I, I hired more people uh, to help me on the administration side of it. So what we do, you know, we call the customer. Uh, the following day, just to make sure that he was uh, happy with the service, to okay. any 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 problems, and then at that point, we kindly ask in a subtle way if, if we can give us some feedback, uh, whether it's good or bad. You know, it helps us to improve our company. Um, how do you deal with bad reviews? Right. Uh, very 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 good question. You know. Some, sometimes there's people you cannot make happy no matter what you do, you can bend over backwards. And at that point, the best thing you can do is just respond professionally and ask them if there's something else you can do for them. So you respond to each comment, each comment. online. It's very important, you know, people see that. It's been one of my keys to being mm -hmm. a, a, such a fast growth because we have a, a, a good reputation online and, and we try to protect it. Now, you guys, we ask, if you guys want us to ask way more specific questions, we do that on our podcast. We interview great people like Chris, other business owners. We give you the golden nuggets about anything and everything you need for your business and to be successful. So check it out, upflip.com forward slash podcast. 
How is Airbnb cleaning different from household to commercial offices, et cetera? For sure. So we used to charge very little for it and get a lot of pressure from it. And essentially, we try to not take those customers. But I figured, what can I do to solve their problem and at the same time position myself as the guy to go to? Mm -hmm. So I started actually asking those customers, what is something that you need so to make your life easier? And they're like, oh, if I can get someone to inspect my unit, someone to do the laundry, someone to do the supply, I crunch my numbers. And then instead of offering just cleaning, I offer to them, which is like a co-hosting. Mm -hmm. So most of my customers, they live in either China, Europe, uh, I got other people you know, on the East Coast. Wow. And so we literally it's a hands-off uh, system for them. You know, we take care of everything uh, from welcoming the, the host, you know, doing the laundry, supplies, and any problems in between stays. What would be the average cost? I mean, let's say I have a 1,000 square foot Two bedroom, two bath villa on the ocean or something. Like, how do you how do you figure out the price? Where are the margins on Airbnb cleaning versus house cleaning? That's that's a good question. So um, if you offer everything, like I said, not just cleaning. If you offer only cleaning, the, the margins are very small. So when you make the most money is when you charge a percentage of the management fee. So for example, we charge in between ten to twenty percent uh, of the gross of the unit who do that generates. I see. And then we take care of everything. Today, where, how many employees do you have? What do you pay them? And how do you retain them to stay with you? And yes, yes, good question. So as of now, we have 22 cleaners. They all range from $19 per hour, you know, the, the, the people who doesn't drive. Okay. The drivers get 20 to 22. If they drive my car, it's $20. If they drive their car, it's 24. Mm -hmm. So, okay. you know, it, it really works out well. Sometimes they want to use their car and they make a little bit extra money. That's that's fine by me. So do you offer like any incentives, any creative ways of- Yes, you know, this is something bonus? very important. You know, last few years I didn't have what it's called. I was not paying attention in, what, in creating a company culture. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it's very important to keep your employees, uh, you know, uh, feel appreciated. So what I've been doing, you know, since pre-COVID, you know, taking them to picnics, you know, carne asadas, of course, every Saturday. Uh, nice. You know, we take them to a bowling uh, game uh, every three months or so. And, you know, we celebrate their birthdays every time. You know, I have a software that tells me, okay, this cleaner's birthday is tomorrow. We get them a cake. We celebrate real quick in the morning and we all got to go. And that, my friends, is being the key for me to keep the employees longer. All right, let's dive into Blitz questions. If you could go back to the pre-pandemic world, what's one thing you would do in advance? Uh, hire more people. What is one fact that changed your perspective on life forever? Oh God, that's a good question. Uh, let's keep that one. Okay. <laughs> what is your favorite business book? The, the 10X Rule. 10X Rule, okay. Now at this stage of success, what advice would you give to your teenage self? Uh, I will definitely uh, no, never stop learning. Look for mentors. Definitely look for mentors and look for mentors. They already <laughs> went through it. Yeah, they can teach you everything. Okay. What's one thing you can't start your mornings without except coffee? Uh, meditation. Meditation. Okay. Now, this is our fan questions. Thanks, you guys, for submitting these questions. This is from Ah, uh, This Is Good. Uh, he or she's asking, what's the next target goal? Uh, we're, next year, we'll be looking at uh, trying to get a 1, $1.75 in sales, total sales. Just one year. Yes. Wow. Definitely. Okay. Uh, the same, same user, Ah, uh, This Is Good. What are the top three lessons learned after the first full year in business? Learn your numbers. Learn how to delegate and start investing in, in marketing. Uh, this is from Atrus. Uh, if you had to start a new business in a different field, what would it be and why? Uh, we'll say carpet cleaning. It's, there's a huge demand from them. Actually, we're in, uh, implemented that business next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This is from Mille Marine, I think, if I'm reading it right. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite non-business book? Uh, Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. Okay. Uh, and this is from Area A. How did the pandemic affect your business? Uh, well, it did at first. Uh, you know, we, we really almost lost more than half of our uh, customers between the May, the months of March to uh, June. Okay. But then after that, it really changed everything once they're home clean, they disinfected. So it's it affected us at first, but now it's actually, uh, you know, uh, such a search in, in business. Okay. All right, Chris, curious about the most single important skill or experience that you need or should have or mm -hmm. can have that'll help you in this business. What can you tell us on For that? For sure. You know, this is a very common problem I've seen with other business owners, and it's very important. It's knowing your numbers. 
Knowing your numbers. Knowing your numbers. Boom. You know, when I uh, started, I just knew that the company was making money. I was working with subcontractors and, you know, I got a letter from the Labor and Industries Department and they fined me with $12,000 for misclassifying the cleaners. Ouch, so okay. essentially, I guess there's a way that you can hire subcontractors, but it's very edgy. Mm -hmm. So they're always kind of watching you, you know, for making a mistake and then you end up with big fines. So if I would have known that, you know, known the rules and regulations, and then on top of that, knowing my numbers, I wouldn't probably got in that uh, situation. You know, an advice I will give to everyone, definitely if you don't have money for a CPA when you're starting, well, at least get an accountant or a bookkeeper, you know, and then have them teach you everything you need to know, what taxes you need to pay, what dates are they due. Mm -hmm. And if you take care of that at the beginning, you will save so much trouble in the end. Um, you know, I didn't pay attention to that at the beginning and then end up biting me in the butt, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. at, at the end of the first year. That's great advice. Yeah. What's your preference? Like you as a business owner, what do you want to see more of coming into the business? What type of service and why? Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's been interesting. I think I mentioned it earlier. Uh, at first, the Airbnb customers were hard to deal with. I didn't really want to be part of it. But now that I got the hang of it, I think I have a system that works for, for us. Uh, I will I will rather stay on the Airbnb side of business. You know, mm -hmm. it's pretty, they're pretty, uh, popular nowadays. I see more and more coming up every day. And if I want to focus on one, I will be on the Airbnb side. Are the profits obviously a little, a little higher? higher? Yes, they they're are, a little okay. higher than the than the other ones. And for the most part, you know, uh, if you do a good job, they get good reviews, then you get even bonus and, and whatnot. So it, it works out very well. In terms of running a business from home, Chris, what are the pros and cons? Because you've been kind of utilizing the house for the last five years. Have you thought about commercial space versus where you're at now? I have, yes. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny that you ask. When we started the operation, uh, you know, it, I really didn't think it was going to grow to, uh, you know, to, to this size. So I wanted to keep everything in house, keep the, the overhead, um, you know, low. Now we're, you know, making a million dollars in sales a, a year, but uh, essentially we, we, now we're in a stage that we need to look for a commercial uh, property. So you're looking for one, okay. Yes, now the thing is that I kind of want to wait a little bit because you know there's a lot of retail spaces empty right now. Um, I kind of want to want for, wait for the right opportunity, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the right cost, so we can uh, essentially move all of our operations to, to that area. So what would be the, the pro, I guess, of transitioning into one space for you as a business owner? One of the things I guess is most important is to separate the business from the home. And okay. it, 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 it works up until a certain point, but now, you know, in the mornings it gets hectic. Yeah. You know, have 25 people in the mornings, <laughs> you know, just talking. And, you know, you don't want to, you know, uh, you know bug your neighbors. Right. So I think it's a good idea just to go to a place and, and just have everything ready, you know, you know, from there, you know, all the operations. Curious about what your day looks like. Yeah. At this point, and how is it different from before? I mean, how many hours of work yeah. do you put in a week? So I would say I work about even between four and six hours a day. Yeah, not so it, it's not bad. You know, sometimes I I, I really don't have to go uh, out. Uh, today is one of those days because it's the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Usually at the end of the month, a lot of people move out. So usually I get busy towards the next, towards the end of the month. And but for the first two weeks, I literally work three hours, four hours a day. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, it's balanced life, work. Um, I think uh, right now, uh, you know, I, I have found a balance between my work and my family. So I'm very, I'm very grateful. That's awesome. Yeah. So Chris, since your income on the Airbnb side of things is dependent on the income of the landlord, mm -hmm. right? How do you have that transparency and know what they're earning so right. that you can take your 10 to 20%? For sure. So whenever I import someone, I, you know, they have to tell me the unit and then I, I use a software called AirDNA. AirDNA. Mm -hmm. okay. So it tells you how much they're, you know, the house are renting from in that area, mm -hmm. the nightly rates. So that gives me a rough idea of how I'm looking to make. And then the number uh, two thing is to have an agreement in place. You have an agreement. Yeah, I have an agreement. It's three months minimum. 
you know, if you don't like it, you can, you know, uh, stop our services. But we really believe that uh, if you stay with us for three months, you will see the results and then you see your income increase as well. So if I want to pursue Airbnb, what would be the secret you would say, if, if, if any, to be successful, to be most profitable? For sure. I actually do have a really good secret, but make sure to comment below because I'll be answering <laughs> those secrets directly. All right. You guys heard yeah. it from Chris. Comment below All to right. get the answer. So you guys, this is the this is the tip hack that we talked earlier in, uh, in the video. Definitely, yes. At first, I was trying to do wear many hats, you know, making the phone calls, uh, talking to customers, charging customers, uh, responding to customers, and it gets you. It's, it's overwhelming. It's too many things. So what I end up doing is uh, I, I look for hiring people overseas so I can maximize my profits. I, I was well, very lucky to hire a lady that uh, uh, her name is Sheena. She's from the Philippines. Lovely. It's very smart. Um, you know, I, I hired her as a customer service representative, and then within two months, she learned the ropes super fast. Six months in, after uh, she's she's working for me, uh, the sales were like a thirty percent increase. Wow! And and then here's the thing, though. I you know I pay five dollars an hour. And there's a like, super well competitive uh, uh, rate for them. Um, you know, as of now, I actually have five uh, customer service representatives working from 7 in the morning to 11 p.m. And really having a, a fantastic customer service, responsive customer service, uh, be someone that's always responding to any web chat, text, mm -hmm. it's key. <clears throat> and they're answering from Philippines? That's right. You know, yeah. uh, we use a, a system that's called Ring Central. Ring Central, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we bought some. Uh, some extensions, so each of the users have an extension. If a call comes in and mm -hmm. one of the person is already in a call, it directs to the next person and so on. So the tip trick is delegate, delegate. over seas. If yes, I think every business owner, you not know, just cleaning, every business owner, small business owner or big business owner can uh, you know, take advantage of the global economy. You right. know, there's people who are very well prepared that can do a good job. Most jobs can do be done, you know, online nowadays, anyways. Right. So, you know, why not delegate one of your most important ones, which is customer service, and make it the beefiest customer service in your town? You know, we answer seven days a week from right. 7 Eleven. You will see the sales within two months, and you'll thank me later. Wow. So you were invited as a guest speaker for the Maid Service Summit. Mm -hmm. Tell us how that happened mm -hmm. and what is the value for you as a business owner to be at these conferences, speaking or attending, etc. For sure, yeah, I was uh, invited this year by the Maid Summit. Uh, it's, it's an event that happens every year where Maid Service business owners get, uh, or experts get together and they share their tips and ideas. This year, actually, I chose how to, I, you know, in my in my talk, I actually taught people how to hire your customer service VA mm -hmm. the first time and it's totally free so if you guys go uh, to customerserviceva.com uh, you'll find the, the guy you you know enter your information and download it and uh, I'll send it to you it's a step by step process that works for any service business owner and it will tell you where to find these people okay uh, how to hire the right one how to pay them and how to train them Awesome. For sure. Well, Chris, this has been amazing. What an yeah. incredible story of a Thank you. startup cost of five grand, and now you're, you know, in the millions mm -hmm. with the yeah. goal in mind. So yeah. it's been great. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for inviting me. And guys, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap of Queen Bee Cleaning Services. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. What an incredible story by Chris. This is the land of opportunities. He started out as an immigrant, worked multiple small jobs, but now he's got some high goals to reach millions of dollars in revenue. Uh, we do this for you guys. Please subscribe to our channel, hit that like button and the bell so that you don't miss any of our amazing content. We do this for you. Thank you for watching.